and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can rotate our pointer cursor with the thumbstick and then when we teleport with it, determine which direction we're facing up on teleport. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. Thanks to all the existing patrons and those patrons who are at the relevant level for a video shout out, you'll see your name scroll up on the screen. Thanks for your support. So if we look at the teleporter facade, we can see there's a setting on here called Apply Destination Rotation. And that means whatever the rotation of the pointer destination is, it will rotate us around that point when we teleport. So if we look at the pointer elements and then destination, and we go to the valid container, whatever the rotation of this is in any of the axes, will rotate us when we teleport. So if we want to change direction when we teleport, we simply need to change the rotational value for Y. So let's look how we can do that with our thumbstick. Before we begin, let's just add a couple of game objects to show which way our pointer cursor is now facing. If we look inside the global resources models folder, we can see a model called arrow, which we will use. And all we're going to do is nest that within our valid container. So if we expand valid container and then drag our arrow and drop it inside valid container, we can see it's quite big. So we're just going to make this smaller. And we also need to make sure our arrow is pointing down our world forward. So I'll just rotate this accordingly. So a Y of minus 125 will rotate this model. So we're pointing towards our world forward. Next, I'm just going to move it forward and move it up a little bit. So I've just brought it up the Y axis and across the Z axis to bring it forward. And then finally, I'm going to go into the materials and provide the green color. And now we can see which way our pointer cursor is facing, which would always be facing forward until we provide the functionality that allows us to rotate it with our thumbstick. So let's look at that now. We're going to be using another combined action. So again, right click on the hierarchy, down to Tilia, prefabs, input combined actions and we're going to be using the axis to angle action so we're going to add one of those to our scene and we'll rename this to right cursor rotator and i'll just move it down to the bottom so it's easier to see so again we have some axis settings to set up and again we can get these from our controller mappings so if we go to the controller mappings and expand into the right controller and then the right thumbstick the horizontal axis is going to be the right thumbstick horizontal axis and the vertical is going to be the right thumbstick vertical. Now we also need to set a directional offset. So when we're turning around in our play space, we want to make sure that forward is always the direction that we're looking. So we need to provide the direction offset of the headset. And again, if we collapse all this back up and if we just expand our track to alias and then look in aliases, if we use headset alias as our directional offset. And finally, again, I'm just gonna reduce the dead zone settings to make them a little bit easier. So minus 0.6 should do to 0.6. So that's one half of the system setup. This will give us the axis information and it will convert it into an angle. And we're gonna use that angle and we're gonna use it to rotate the pointer. To do that, we need to set up some components that can take an angle and then rotate the pointer game object. And we'll do this without using any code. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new game object to store this logic in. So right click and then just create empty. And we'll call this right cursor rotator logic. Now the right cursor rotator has the axis to angle action, which gives us a float value, which is the angle that we're interested in. However, rotations up here are done in vector three. So we need to turn that float into the relevant vector three we want to rotate around. And we only want to rotate around the Y axis. So in our right cursor rotator logic, we're going to need a float to vector three transformer. So we'll add one of those. And then we need some way of mutating that game object or changing the game object's rotation. So we're going to use the transform Euler rotation mutator. So we'll search for that and add that. We'll come back to set these up in a moment. First of all, we need to go over to our right cursor rotator again. And then in the axis to angle action, we need to change the value change event and we just need to add a couple of listeners 
and we'll use the right cursor rotator logic for both of those listeners. And on the first listener, we're going to select the float to vector 3 current y. And what this will do is it will take the angle that's come out of here whenever it changes. It will go over and it will pass that into the float to vector 3 transformer as the y, because that's what we want to rotate around our y. And then the next thing we need to do is, again, just go to float to vector 3 and call do transform. And that will turn this float into a vector 3, which will be 0 for the x, comma, whatever our angle is for the y, comma, 0 for the z. So we're all set up here. Let's go back over to our rotator logic. And when this transform has happened, so when this does get converted into that correct vector 3, we want to call the transform over here. So again, we're going to add a listener. And we'll drag this into there. And for the function, we're going to go down to the transform Euler rotation mutator. And we just want to call do set property. This will set the rotation to whichever direction we're pointing our thumbstick. And finally, we need to set up our transform Euler rotation mutator. We need to set up the target of the thing we're actually going to rotate. And the thing that we're rotating is in the destination. And we just want to rotate the valid container. So on our object pointer curved, we just go down into destination, into the element cylinder and then the valid container. We want to rotate around local values. We're only interested in changing the Y value, so we can untick the X and untick the Z. And we don't need to worry about any origin settings. And there we go. So what we've set up now is this axis to angle will pick up wherever we push our thumbstick. It will then take that angle information, turn it into a vector 3, use that vector 3 to set the rotation of our pointer destination cursor. And then whatever our point of destination cursor's rotation will be, that will then be passed over to the teleporter and used to teleport us in that direction. So let's run the scene and see that working. So now we're in the scene. If I press up on the thumbstick, which now activates it, we can see rotating my finger around the thumbstick actually rotates our point of cursor. And then if I face in a different direction and release, it actually now rotates me on teleportation to be pointed in that direction. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Leave any likes and dislikes down below and any comments. And please consider becoming a VRTK patron. Thanks for watching and bye for now.